Hello and welcome back to another Zero Linux video. In this one, I'm going to do something I didn't think I would be doing, but apparently it needs to be done. So, without further ado, let's get into it. In this one, I'll be introducing and describing what Zero Linux is and how it works. Because a lot of people recently have been asking me to make this video. So, here it is. No camera, no thrills, no intro, no shenanigans. Straight into it. Okay, so as you can see, this is what you'll be greeted with on the Zero KDE edition. First thing to do, post install, is really important. And it is update the system. This is the terminal, this is fast fetch. I'm just showing it off just for sake of showing it at all. So you won't be greeted with this post install. So you'll be greeted with as an empty desktop, just like that. You will notice up in the system tray, top right, you will see an update counter. This is AppDatafier, an update checker widget that I included on KDE. I included a similar one on GNOME. So there you go. As you can see, we got tons of updates. And you, you're going to get even more if you have downloaded the ISO, let's say, a month after I have put it up. Because I only release new ISOs once every three months. So once a quarter. So you will have way more than this. This is just between yesterday and today. So how do you update? You either click the icon in the system tray and the terminal icon top right. This one is to refresh, so check for updates. But you click this one, you either click this one, or you launch the toolkit, select option one, and option U, update system. So I would recommend you go the app data fire route because it checks for more than native packages. It checks for native packages, a UR, flat packs, firmware, and so on and so forth. So you just click this and it will say it will use Peru or yay, but on zero Linux, we use Peru because it's the best one out there and it uses Rust. But you type your password and on you go. That's the gist of it. You got the date and time. You got the weather widget. It's by default set to Beirut. You'll have to change it. Of course, you just right click configure weather underground. And then choose, and if you want to find your station for your location, you go to Weather Underground and you get your station. And you, pay, you paste the location there. Mine is in D12. And on Zero Linux, I decided not to include Firefox or Brave or what have you because of reason. The browsers included on Zero Linux are whatever the desktop environment ships with. like. In, in the example of KDE, it's Falcon. Falcon is a Qt uh, browser created by the KDE devs. On GNOME, it's Epiphany, I think it's called. It's created by the GNOME developers. If you, want, if you don't agree with my choices, all you can do is launch the toolkit, go to option 6, option 2, and select whatever browser from the list. I'm not going to go through the toolkit because I have a separate video linked in the video description where you, uh, I tell you everything there is to know about the toolkit. With that out of the way, I'm going to tell you about the rest of uh, the distro. So you don't get any bloat. As I mentioned in my, pre on my private blog, Zero Linux does not ship bloatware. It's not a bloated distro. It's not the point of Zero Linux. Zero Linux is just there for you to get started and learn along the way. So everything is left to you to discover and install. I included just the basics for you to get up and running. So as you can see, this is what ships with KDE by default. I added meld for developers out there who like to compare files. It's a file comparison thing. So you open it, you select file, for example, you select file one, let's say home, there's nothing here. Oh, there's something. Read me and then cosmic. 
whatever and you click compare it's going to compare the two and it, it highlights everything that's different what else did i include nothing basically nothing out of the ordinary not even a office suite because there's LibreOffice, open office i don't want to install one and then and at the end of the day you start hating on it and you say why did you include open office you didn't include LibreOffice? Or blah 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 the choice is yours <laughs> it's uh, it's not up to me to decide what you like and what you don't it ships also with remote desktop of course K, uh, krdc whatever you need to get your printer up and running so hp whatever printer you have some printers might not be supported you'll have to figure that one out on your own but i added initial support for printers uh, i included amarok amarok is a kde music player Amarok is created by the KDE devs for KDE, and I think, in my opinion, you're free to disagree, that it's one of the best-looking music players out there, and it's very well integrated with KDE. So I don't have any music over here, but you get the idea. It's a nice-looking, it shows album art, it shows you the album art, the tracks, and everything. You can organize your music and stuff, and when you close it, it's going to tell you that it's going to be in the tray. It doesn't close. It's, it remains in the system tray until you actually close it by right-clicking on it, selecting quit, quit. Also, um, what else did I include? I included Audio Tube, also by the KDE devs. Uh, sorry, Plasma Tube is by the AD, A, KDE devs. Audio Tube is to listen to your YouTube music. And that's it. Basically, everything else is what ships with KDE Plasma. I included Btop instead of Htop, but you got Htop as well. <laughs> I included both. Uh, I prefer Btop, and on Zero Linux, it's pre-themed. Another thing that people don't pay attention to is what I have included out of the box. So, as far as widgets go, add or manage widgets, I included something called Panel Colorizer. Panel Colorizer, all you have to do is add it to the panel, close, exit mode in the upcoming release i will add it just like i just added here it'll be there by default so all you have to do is click on it to disable it or enable it right click on it configure panel colorizer what's beautiful about panel colorizer is all these different templates that you can work off of. like if you select this one let's say load apply it changes the whole panel if you want this one, you select this one. If you want, let's say, the rounded corners one, you get the idea. Some, most people use uh, panel colorizer to set transparency, which is this one. And apply. And as you can see, the panel is completely transparent. And in order to do the same thing for the uh, dock, you'll have to add the widget to the dock as well. And then configure it. I don't know why it doesn't apply for both. I don't, I don't use the thing. But I just included it for people who want to customize their panel or dock. So you click on it, you disable it. That's it. You click on it, it will reload the last one you loaded. That's panel colorizer. Also, what I included is another thing, desktop wallpaper. Now, we don't have videos on this virtual machine, but image where it says image you select smart video wallpaper reborn that's another feature i included on zero linux out of the box as of last uh, last month's release you select that and you start selecting whatever video you want to set also again i'm going to have uh, the video i created about this widget plasmoid in the video description i made a dedicated video for this extension so i'm going to say cancel discard because we don't have any videos and i included as well packseek for your package management so if you want to install a package and you know uh, you want to look if it's where it's available on the aur or let's say uh the, the native uh, arch linux repositories well you just let's say spotify there you go Save. you click here and then you go up, 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 and you see. And if it's from the AUR, you need to sh click on the button called Show PKG Build. When you click the Show PKG Build, which I recommend you do, 
it will show you the PKG build and where it's pulling the package from, source, or wherever. Be mindful of AUR packages. Recently, there was malware distributed on the AUR, which was taken down day one or 48 hours after. So, but be mindful. Re, if, you, if you understand things and you know how, how to read stuff like that, please read the PKG build first before committing. It's really important. Otherwise, you might be installing malware on your system. Another thing I wanted to mention, why I love KDE. I love KDE because, for example, it includes Flatpak permissions in the settings itself. Now, I don't have any Flatpaks installed on this virtual machine, but if, you, if I had, I just click the application and I manage the permissions over here. It's in the settings. There's no other desktop environment or window manager that allows, allows you to do that without having to install a third-party application. KDE, it's right there out of the box, in the settings. I wish GNOME did that, for example. What else is there to talk about? You got Yakwake, your drop-down terminal, which is a KDE thing. I love it. It comes out of the box with KDE. It doesn't come out of the box on GNOME, for example, without you having to install Guake with a G. But there you go. It's a more complete system. This is what I love about KDE. That's why I love KDE. That's why I use it. Now, don't get me wrong, KDE does have its own set of issues. There's no such thing that has zero issues. But I like it nonetheless. Anyway, this is KDE, and I love it. This is Zero Linux in a nutshell, the KDE edition. I'm not going to make a video about the GNOME edition because the GNOME edition is the same thing. It's minimalism. It's nothing extra out of the box, leaving the choices all up to you. Everything can be done Everything you need, or most things you need, can be done via the toolkit. Again, don't forget, the link to, to the toolkit video will be in the description. And of course, before I leave, I want to remind everyone not to forget that a wiki for Zero Linux exists. So to go to the wiki, you just click on the wiki link in the top menu bar on the main website. It will take you to the wiki. And to know more about the distro, you click distro and it's going to load the distro's wiki. And keep in mind that Zero Linux, on Zero Linux, KDE and the upcoming Cosmic have the NVIDIA Nouveau blacklisted. Why? Simply because it's out of date. It doesn't support the 50 series cards, and it causes the CPU to get pegged at 100%. Well, unblacklisted un once the update gets pushed, but for now, temporarily, it has been blacklisted. Now. But, uh, would blacklisting it make it work on 50 series cards? I don't know. I don't have a 50 series card. I'm too poor for that. So if you have a 50 series card and would like to test that, you're more than welcome. Uh, on a GNOME, however, it hasn't been blacklisted because no such thing, uh, no such issue affects anything. So if you have a 50 series, it's not going to boot, quite simply. You got, we need to wait for Nouveau to get updated. Other than that, Zero Linux no longer ships with X11. But I don't remove anything without giving it back to you in the toolkit. So if you want X11 because uh, X and Y software doesn't function under Wayland, you're free to reinstall it. It's option number five under services in the toolkit. Supported file systems, this is also, I need to talk about that. Zero Linux no longer supports BTRFS. Again, temporarily, because there's an ongoing issue with uh, this file system where the, the init RAMFS image is not copied to the correct volume. This will be fixed. Once it's fixed, I'll re-enable BT, uh, BTRFS for you guys. Quick heads up uh, for anyone new here. The distro won't work on old school computers that use legacy BIOS MBR. It only runs on newer setups with UEFI. That's the modern way computers start up. If you're not sure what that means, just head on to this article and check if your PC supports UEFI. If it doesn't, don't sweat it. Just pick a distro made for older hardware instead. Easy as that. Very clear. If you boot the ISO on such devices, it might boot, but after installing it, you might have issues. And I recommend you use Ventoy for your bootable drive, of course. You can put multiple ISOs on that drive instead of having to burn a new one for each ISO. And that's it. And I explain, I go in detail about Nouveau and Wayland. 
And also the wiki includes uh, the toolkit, the inst and other projects I uh, I have created. So if you're interested, head on over there and read. And that's it. That's the video for you. Please give it a go. And from uh, as of the recording of this video until the end of July, uh, so July 31st, there's a 50% discount on uh, the donation for Zero Linux. So instead of donating the full amount, you can now uh, use a link I'll post in the description below and you can get it for 50% off. Don't forget to like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you're not subscribed and bring the bell to get notified. That's all I'm going to say at the end of the video and I'll see you in the next one.